Hello again, I'm back. Um, okay, last time we talked, we're, I'm gonna put the transmission mount in. Anyways, uh, I modified uh, Martin's uh, transmission mount. I'll show what it looks like. You see the spacers on each end? Okay. What happens is uh, the, the half inch bolts go up through the car and then I got plates uh, in the inside the car, underneath the carpet, that uh, that the the, the 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 transmission mount goes all the way through, and it bolts to the plates inside the car. What it does is it supports the transmission transmission mount uh, better. So, <clears throat> and then the, like I said, the bolts go all the way up through, right to the inside of the car where I have these plates TIG welded to the inside of the car. Under, under the carpet. You know, plates are big plates. And um, half inch bolts go through those and it supports the transmission mount. So that's one of the modifications that I did, one of many modifications. Um, <clears throat> so here's the, uh, here's my training mount. This had to be a three quarter uh, plate, aluminum plate, between the motor mount and uh, the transmission mount, not the motor mount. The transmission mount and the transmission cross member. That's what it ended up being for me. No. Got to remember that uh, I'm not positive on these numbers, but I do believe that I, I got a, a two degree pinion angle on the rear end and a two degree pinion angle on the transmission. So on, on total, it's four degrees. Now, that's all in, in Martin's book, the Monster Miata book. It tells you what your pinion angle is supposed to be. Anyways, this is all figured out a long time ago. I already did all this, but that's that's what where that plate comes in is because you need the pinion angle has to be correct, or else you'll get a vibration. So, anyways, I'm not going to make you guys watch the whole thing. I'm just going to start putting the car together and show you bits and pieces that's important um, as I go along. So, because I don't, it's, it's, it's going to take me a long time, and I don't want to bore you guys. So, I'm just going to kind of show you the highlights. So every time I put something in, I'm going to show you, and if it's important, I'm going to explain to you what to do, what you shouldn't do, and what you what to run, and what I changed. Okay, let's see some. Okay, hello again. I'm back. Um, what you uh, something I got to show you first um, is you want to put your transmission lines in before you put your transmission um, cross uh, over in. Anyways, reason is I'll show you. So there's a there's a transmission mount, transmission crossover. There's a mount. But before you do that, <clears throat> you want to put your transmission lines on first. So there's there's my transmission lines. You want to put your transmission lines on first because once you start jacking up the tail of this transmission, you can't get your hand in there to get the transmission lines on. So put your training lines on first. There's what I use. They're uh I think it's an AN, AN6, so. And then put your neutral safety switch in too. Your uh, neutral reverse safety switch, that's gotta go in too. Before we put the transmission cruiser in. Okay. I said I've shown you guys random stuff as we go along. I'm not going to make you guys watch the whole thing. All right, see you soon. Hello, I'm back. Uh, the last thing that I said is I'm going to show you random things. I didn't mean to say it like that. What I meant to say is I'm showing it to you step by step. I'm not going to skip anything. Step by step how I put the car together. But I'm going to jump on random things because that's what I have to do in order to get this car together. I'll give you for instance, I left the I left the motor mounts loose because I know that I had to do my transmission mount and, and get the transmission mount lined up in the correct location. It's gonna um, it's gonna show me where my if my motor mounts are correct. So when I, when I know that the transmission mount lines up and everything lines up there, I know that my motor mounts are lined up. So that's why I left the motor mounts loose. So I had to jump from the motor mounts to the transmission mount. 
Anyways, now I'm going to show you. I got it all transmission mounts all together, and I'll show you the modifications that I've done. Okay. So once again, we'll slide underneath the car. So. So, okay. So anyways, you see that? There's the extra mount that I put on there. His kit didn't come uh, with that, but it's a spacer. And then there's a plate inside the car, and so that's bolted up through the car. So there's what the transmission mount looks like. There's a spacer on this side. <coughs> you always want to put the nuts on the inside. Bolts go on the outside, not on the inside. Because there's no room to put the, the bolt through. So the nuts have to be on this side. And you see I got a I got an LS and I got an arrow that points to the front of the car. So I know how the transmission mount goes on. Because you can you can you can flip it and get it mixed up and it doesn't go on right now. So that's what it looks like. So now we jump we jump to the motor mounts. So now I'm gonna look at our motor mounts. And now I gotta tighten down the motor mounts. Anyways, you'll notice that uh, once I get there, that now the engine is sitting nice and straight in the car. So it's not crooked anymore. The engine's sitting nice and straight. So now, if you look at the motor mount, you probably can't see it. I'm going to try to get it so you can see it. You can see that, that where the, the pattern is perfect on it, so it's in the exact location that it needs to be. Same thing with this side, I guarantee it. So, it's right, right where it needs to be. Now, I tighten up the motor mounts, and then, I know this is going to sound crazy, but then, I put my headers on. Believe it or not, that's the next thing. That's how I have to do this motors. Tighten up the motor mounts, and then the headers go on. And when I get to that, when I get to that section, I'll show you the header gaskets that I use. All right, see you soon. Well, hello again, it's John. Um, Okay, we're gonna I'm gonna put the headers on. That's next. So the transmission mount is, is tightened down. The motor mounts are tightened down. Remember, don't put your headers on. This is a Martin's kit, you know, Monster Miata's kit. Don't put your headers on before you tighten down your motor mounts. So once you put the headers on, you can't tighten down the motor mounts. You'll be taking your headers off again to tighten down the motor mounts. So now that the motor mounts are tightened down. We're going to go after the headers. So I'm going to show you the gaskets that I use. Okay, these are the gaskets that I use. All right, let's see. It says, um, read that or not. So we can read that part number. Okay, it says SCE4736. SCE4736. So these are copper header gaskets. These don't leak. Okay, I've had a lot of ones yet. I, I marked it front. And I think all this does is say this is this side out. And this one says this side out. But you see, I got it marked passenger side, driver's side, front. This one says front. Okay, so. These are these are the, the header gaskets that I use. Like I said, they don't leak, and I've I've used them over and over and over again. So that's what I use. Um, I, once again, I use ARP stainless steel hardware. Okay, this is 300 series stainless. Uh, I, I think these are. Well, I think they're one inch long. Let's check them. Okay, gotta remember that I got a half inch flange. Okay, I got a half inch flange. Yeah, these are one inch. Okay, so I got a half inch flange, and and there's a there's a washer on here. So 
Now I gotta remember that I'm I'm using these are AFR 205 heads. Okay. And like I was telling you earlier, they they got a they got a you can see it there. They got two bolt patterns on the on the heads. You got an in, inner bolt pattern and an outer bolt pattern. Okay. There it is right there. This is this is that's the that's the inner bolt pattern here and here and then the outer bolt pattern well I set up these header flanges are for the outer bolt pattern that way I don't have any problems putting my headers on okay I'm, I'm not wrestling to put my headers on and that's what uh, these gaskets here are set for the outside bolt pattern okay outside bolt pattern so you gotta remember that you gotta you gotta have those those headers have to be custom made for the outer bolt pattern. Anything? So Martin, I had I had Martin make these up custom for the for the outside outer bolt pattern. So if you see that it lines up, it lines up with the outer bolt pattern. Okay. So that's what I'm tackling next. We're doing headers. And um, headers is kind of a tricky thing because um the way the AFR heads are designed, there's, there's, they don't allow for too much depth um, in the heads. So that's why I have that that particular washer on there with the half inch flange, with that gasket, with, like I said, with that particular lock washer. And, and that's about as deep as I can get it in the head. Um, I, I try to get it as deep in the head as you can because Header bolts, they, they strip out real easy. I already, I already stripped out, I think, two on those AFR 205 heads, and I had to drill them and put helicoils in them. I think two of them. Because, I mean, even if you do everything, and I, and I do everything right, things still screw up. And so you can imagine if you're a guy and you're doing it wrong, <laughs> you know, because I do everything right, and I still have, sometimes I have a problem. Not very often, but sometimes. Especially with lifters. Hopefully we got it resolved. Knock on wood, crush your fingers. So anyways, so that's what I'm tackling. I'm doing headers next. When I got them all bolted up, I'll show you. All right, see you soon. Hello, it's John. I wasn't going to show you uh, how easy it is to do these headers, but I, I figure I'm going to. So this is this is how easy it is to, to tighten up the headers with this kind of flange. This is, like I said, I have no problems. Look at this, just a speed wrench. So I could I could even use a ratchet in a socket. So anyways you start from doing headers you start from the in inside work your way out. Inside work your way out. Well, this is how easy it is. And that's it. So I'm gonna go through and I'll torque them down, double check them, but uh, that's how easy it is with these uh, header flanges. All right, see you soon. Hello, uh, the headers are all tightened down. Uh, let me show you. Okay. There's the uh, passenger side. driver's side okay so believe it or not our next thing to do is to set the timing on the motor and uh, <clears throat> I know you see it on TV and um, you know they, they, they got the they put the motor on the dyno and and they, they try to start it and it fires up right away and they go, nice startup, nice startup. But they don't tell you how they did it, you know. 
So I'm going to show you exactly how you time a motor. Okay. When I get ready, I'll uh, I'll let I'll let you know. Oh, hello there. This is John. Poor man's garage. Okay, now I'm going to show you how uh, to time uh, the motor. So uh, I showed you earlier that uh, how to get your your timing pointer um, uh, where it needs to be a top dead center with a um, mag base and a dial indicator on number one cylinder. Um, I showed you a little bit of that, not too much, but um, <clears throat> basically you put a mag base on, on number one cylinder and you, you roll the crankshaft in the running direction and you go you look at the piston and make sure it's up at the top and when it goes to the top you roll it past the top until it starts going back down again until the dial indicator reads ten thousands is what I like to do ten thousands and, and then you make a mark on the harmonic balancer and then you roll it the other way until it comes back up and then back down at ten thousands again you make another mark and in between those two marks your pointer should be at top dead center exactly top dead center so we did that, and, and I know that my pointer is dead nuts on top of that center. So now that we know that our timing pointer and the harmonic balancer and the number one piston all coincides at top dead center. So now, to time the motor, I know you see it on TV, and you see, you see one guy trying it, and he tries to start the car, and, and spits and sputters, and then if it pops through the carburetor, they know it's 180 degrees out. And then you see the guys on, you know, the, you know, um, on the shows, and you know they, they go to dyno the motor and they turn the key and fires up right away. And go, oh, nice startup, nice startup. You know, everything's perfect. You know, that's only because they do it a bunch of times and to to show you that it's it fires up that easy, but not not in real life. But we're gonna see. So I'm gonna set the timing on this motor, and we're gonna see just how well it fires up and how close I am. So I'm gonna show you how I do it. Okay, first thing you do, <clears throat> you take your distributor and you find your number one plug wire. You're working on number one cylinder, you're working on number one plug wire. So that I know that this is the number one plug wire. So so you trace the plug wire down to this terminal. So this is number one. See it's I even got it marked there, number one. So you trace it down to this terminal. Then you make a mark. See, I got a mark here, black mark. Okay, make sure it it's perfectly in line with that number one terminal. All right, so we're gonna take now that we know that that's number one wire, that's number one terminal. Now we're gonna take the, the distributor cap off. Okay, we're gonna take the distributor cap off. And if you see the distributor cap, see there's another black mark there. So it, it all should be in line with each other. So we know that that's number one. That is right there. That's my number one wire for my number one cylinder. Okay, let's go over to the car now. Okay, so let's go over the motor. So what you need to do, and I won't show you this, is you take off the valve cover. Let's do that. Let's take off the valve cover. Let's set the valve cover nice and easy over here. Nice and easy, hopefully. So the valve cover right there. Okay, this is this is the number one cylinder. This is the number one exhaust valve. This is the number one intake valve. Remember, we set our valve lash. Okay, now I got this. This is just a stainless steel welding wire, and it's going into the number one cylinder. Okay, that's all it is. Just a wire going in the number one cylinder. Whatever you use, make sure that. As you turn over the motor, that whatever you put inside that cylinder doesn't get jammed up. Okay, so I just got a piece of stainless steel wire. Hold them right here. Okay, so now what we're looking to do is we're looking to have that number one piston all the way up to the top. That's why you got the wire in here because you're going to feel it. You're going to feel that wire either go down or come up. I don't know what it's going to do because so I haven't set it yet. I don't know where the motor's at. No, no clue. So, but I'm I'm gonna have this wire in here. And I'm gonna feel I'm gonna feel if that piston's gonna go down or gonna come up. 
So now you want the number one piston all the way up to the top. You want both of these, the intake and exhaust valves closed. And you want your harmonic balancer to be exactly top dead center for now. For now we're looking for top dead center. So I got my light here. I'm going to shine my light at my harmonic balancer. Now my harmonic balancer is different from you guys. All right, and that's that's the reason why I didn't want to show you this because I didn't want to confuse you. So on my harmonic balancer because I had to move the whole thing because I wasn't able to see the harmonic balancer. 30 degrees is top dead center for me. So when when I want to set the motor, I want to set, I'm going to set this motor, so I'll set the timing on the motor, is I want to set the timing for 30 degrees. Which for my harmonic balancer would be 60. For you guys it's 30. Okay, so let's roll the engine over in the running direction. I got my bigger wrench here. I'm going to roll the engine over, and I'm going to see where if that piston's going up or going down. Okay, the piston's it's going down. So now I'm going to keep keep rolling the motor over. Piston's got to go all the way down. Then it's got to come back up. Not only that, but I want both the intake valve and the exhaust valve to be closed. So I'm rolling it over. I can see my my exhaust uh, valve is down, so I'm just gonna just gonna check this wire to make sure I'm not jamming jamming it up inside the cylinder. That would be very bad. Okay, so we're not jammed up. So I'm keep I'm keep rolling. Now the wire, the cylinder's starting to come up, starting to come up. So I want to make sure that it's not jammed up. Still coming up. Okay, but my valve is down. And I'm, I'm looking at my harmonic balancer. And my valve's down. And my harmonic balancer still... I'm still... Um, I gotta get my wrench set again. <clears throat> harmonic balancer's still not in the right place. So I gotta keep rolling. Because if I was to set the timing now, I'd be 180 degrees out. And we don't want to be 180 degrees out. We want to be, we want to be dead nuts on. So now the piston's back up to the top again. So we got to keep rolling the motor over. We can't set the timing now, even though the harmonic balancer, for me, I, I just passed 30, which is my top dead center for you guys. My 30 is top dead center, but it, it's it, right now it's 180 degrees out, so we got to keep we got to keep going, got to keep turning the motor over. So now the piston's going to have to come back down once again. So we keep turning the motor over. I got to check my I got to check my rod here to make sure that I'm not jammed up inside the cylinder. Nope. Looks good, so now I'm watching my rod, and my rod's showing me where my piston's at. Oh, the rod's going back down. So I know the piston's going back down. All right, it's hard for me to show you guys this. Hold the camera at the same time and turn the motor over. So now my piston's coming back up. Okay, so. I gotta watch my harmonic balancer now. So now for me, the piston's coming back up, and, and I'm somewhere around 180. So gotta remember that my harmonic balancer, my 30 is top dead center. So in order for me to be, and you want to set the timing for 30 degrees, 30 degrees total on the motor. For initial startup, you don't want to go past 30 degrees. For break-in, you don't want to go past 30 degrees. You don't want to go past 30 degrees for at least 500 miles, especially 11 to 1 motor. So we're going to set the timing for exactly 30 degrees. So now I'm just going to keep rolling the harmonic balancer. 
until I get to 30 degrees. I'm watching my rod, my piston's still coming up. I'm at 120. There's 110. If you guys can see that or not. 110. I'm at 100. There's 90. Eighty. There's seventy. You see the see the white mark? That white mark on there? That white mark is is actually thirty-five degrees for me. Okay? That white mark is thirty-five degrees. So sixty is thirty for me. So now there's the white mark. Okay, now now I set it for a little bit. Thirty degrees. I'm at exactly 30 degrees on my harmonic balancer. I know my piston is all the way up at the top because my, my rod shows that the piston's all the way up at the top. Now, my intake or my exhaust valve is loose. My intake valve rocker is loose. So both rockers got play in it, they're loose. So both valves are closed. The number one piston is all the way up to the top. And my harmonic balancer is at 30 degrees. Okay? This is how you set the timing on the motor. Okay, so now we're going to put in the distributor. Okay? And you remember that, that line that I had on the distributor here. So now I'm going to put, I'm going to put a little lubricant on the distributor here. Okay, this one I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put this is this is Clevite engine assembly. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put I'm gonna put some lubricant here on this gear, the bottom of the gear and on the side of the gear. It's like that. Okay. There's a the, there's the lubricant. Okay. I'm gonna lu lubricate. Shaft here. I go around and lubricate the gear. I'll lubricate the bottom of the gear. Sides of the gear. Okay. Right, everything's gonna get lubricated. It's kind of kind of like a real thick kind of grease. Well, it's engine assembly, but boy, is it sticky. So, <clears throat> okay. All right, I got gonna need a rag here. I'll grab this rag. Okay, so, okay, now, now we, uh, so we got, we got our mark there, see, there's our mark, and, uh, we can't forget the, uh, the little rotor, so let's put the rotor on, All right, hold on, fellas, I gotta, I gotta put that, that rotor on, it's, a little tricky. Get it right. Okay. I want to get my hands in the grease, so I gotta get the rotor on. So let's line up where it's supposed to be. Put it on. Oh, easier said than done. Well, I'll tell you what, let's, let's put a little lubricant on there. I see it's got two O-rings on it. So let's try putting a little, little lubricant on the O-rings. See if that doesn't help us put the rotor on. Maybe the O-rings are a little stiff or something. I don't know. So let's, uh, let's put a little something on here and see if we can't get it to slide in. I can't 
believe it's that. Right. Well, there it goes. Well, I guess it ain't coming off once you put it on. There's. So anyhow, like I said, it's all live. <laughs> okay, so. There's our rod. It, it's, it's in place now. It ain't coming out, that's for sure. Um, so, now when we put this in the motor, we know that that rotor has to line up with that mark. So, let's go do that. Let's see here. Let me show you guys. Find a spot for this camera. It's going to show you guys. We're even looking at the sky. I'm trying to get a little spot here where I can put the camera so I can show you guys. Okay. So, what we have to do now we got our harmonic balancers on 30. Both our intake and exhaust valves are uh, are closed. So now I'm gonna take this uh, this um, plug that I had in the distributor. So now <clears throat> we're gonna slide this in. And I want my wire. I, I know where I want my wire at. I want my wire on the front of the motor. Before before I <clears throat> yep, I want it, I want it on the front of the motor. I want it square to the front of the motor. I, I know that. But what I'll do is I'm going to put on the distributor cap just to make sure that that's where I want it to be at. Because obviously you, you want your wires laying like that. It's got to lay like that in the motor. So I'm going to put it on to make sure that that's exactly where I want it at and just kind of dummy it up. So I, I want it like that. That's where I want that distributor, just like that. Okay. So that's where I want it. That's, that's where the wires are, are nice and even into the motor. Okay. So now what we got to do is we can, we, we kind of got to play a game with this distributor because if you ever worked on a Ford you know and I know that as as you go uh, in and out with it there's a hex gear in there and so you you kind of got to play pull the distributor in pull the distributor out in order to get it to line up to that mark so I don't know if I'll hit it the first time or not well, see, I just, I just, I just got it in, but you can see that it went in, so it's in the hex, but you can see that it's a little off. It's, it's a little off, not much, but I want it to go one tooth this way, so I got to pull it back out again, and as I pull it back out, I, I got to try for the next tooth in front of that, and see if I can't get it in. Now I got it in there, and it, I went too, one tooth too far now. So I gotta pull it back out, and I can't gonna see if I can just get it into that, that one exactly where I want it to be. So sometimes you got, see now I'm too far again. So you gotta pull it out again, and this is kind of a game that we play. And you're gonna play with this distributor until you get it to where you want it to be. Now, I don't know, I think that might be really close, but I have to check it with my plug wires again to make sure that... that I have the plug wires laying the way I want it in the motor. Because you don't want it like this, you don't want it like that, you want it, it's gotta be even. It's got to be laying right into the motor. I tell you what, laying like that, let's see how close I am. Boy, 
Boy, that's really close. Once again, I'm one tooth too far back. I just got to get it one tooth, one tooth ahead of that one. I just got to go one tooth ahead, which sounds easy. But And sometimes you gotta take a, a quarter inch socket and just turn the hex in the oil pump just a little bit. And I'm way, way, way far away. Oop. Wonder if that's it. We might have got it. Let's check it out. Let's see where we're at. We might have hit it. Okay, so that's that's about where I want the wires to lay at. That's how I want them to lay. So let's pull it off and see how close we are. Holy crud. We're just about dead nuts. That's right where I want it at. That's the tooth that I'm looking for. Now we know we got our, our our wires laying right. So now we're gonna turn this thing so that it's exactly in line with that mark I made, exactly in line with it. Alright. Then I'm gonna put my hole down on here and I'm gonna I'm gonna tighten it down. Let's, let's put the hole down on there. I'm gonna tighten it down. Here's my distributor hold down. Just like that. Hold down on there. I'm not going to tighten it up. I'm just going to leave it semi loose. But I want to be able to move it just a little bit by hand. So, anyways. So let's we'll, we'll see how good this thing fires up the day I get it all together. I'm not going to touch it. I'm not going to touch it. Oh, and, and all I'm going to do, I might tighten it down just a little tiny bit more. I'm going to leave it right there, just just what I showed you, guy. And we'll see how good this motor fires up for the first time. Okay. That's how you set the timing on more for initial startup. Okay, we'll see you soon.